Namaste everyone, thanks for joining me for my first yoga class. Uh, today's class is going to be uh, just a warm up for the body really. It's going to be no like high intensity, loads of vinyasas or anything like that. It's just um, some of my favourite poses, I really enjoy twisting, just to kind of get us into our bodies, feeling our bodies out of our heads into our bodies a little bit more. So we shall start with a, uh, a shake off. So shaking off whatever has already come up for you today, whatever time of day you're doing this class, whether it be the morning, afternoon or evening. So yeah, we can just shake off whatever is already in our bodies and then we shall do some pranayama to settle and then get into some movement. So, this song is called Fireworks by Nami on Spotify. And once you've had a little release boogie, come down onto your mat and we shall start with some pranayama. So come down into a comfortable seated position, easy pose, cross legs. If this position is a little bit tough on your hips, you can always grab a block or a cushion, a book, whatever you have at home to just give yourself a little bit of extra height. And it's just a little bit easier on the hips there. So we're going to start off with an alternate nostril pranayama. Just balancing the left and right side of the brain. And just kind of calming and quietening our minds so that we can start to listen to the body instead of all of those thoughts that run around inside our heads all day, every day. So if you take your left hand, and you can place it on your knee. So you can either place it down if you feel like you need some grounding or upwards towards the sky if in open receptivity. And if you have it up towards the sky, then you can just go ahead and put the tip of your thumb and the tip of your first finger lightly touching and the rest of the three fingers together and straight in Dhyan Mudra. And then your right hand is going to aid you in the alternate nostril breathing. So a round of this breathing is breathing in through your left nostril, out through your right nostril, in through your right nostril and out through your left. That is one round. And we use our fingers to aid in this. So we use our thumb to block off the right nostril and our ring finger to block off the left nostril. Okay, so if you put your middle finger and index finger just resting on your third eye, I always like to give the, my third eye a little bit of a massage. And then you close down your outer eyes. Okay, so we start off by blocking off the right nostril, inhaling to the count of four. So inhaling two, three, four blocking off the left nostril and releasing the right, exhaling two, three, four, inhaling two, three, four, through the right nostril, blocking off the right nostril, opening the left and exhaling two, three, four. So just carry on this at your own pace, so inhaling through the left nostril, two, three, four, Closing off the left nostril, opening the right, exhaling two, three, four, inhaling two, three, four, closing off the right nostril, exhaling two, three, four.
So continue to inhale and exhale through your nostrils with the aid of your fingers. And when you're inhaling and exhaling, try to breathe in to your belly and out of your belly. So one thing that you may or may not notice about babies is that they breathe into their bellies instinctively. It's only as we get older into adulthood where we start to just kind of just breathe into our chests and not breathe into our bellies. And so just notice the feeling of your belly expanding and contracting as you inhale and exhale. And try and make the inhales and exhales really, really light, as though there's a feather underneath your nose and you don't want this feather to move. You want it to move as little as possible. So continue on with our rounds. We'll make this our last two rounds. So inhaling through the left nostril, two, three, four. Closing off the left, exhaling through the right, two, three, four. Inhaling right, two, three, four. Exhaling left, two, three, four. Inhaling left, two, three, four. Exhaling right, two, three, four. Inhaling right, two, three, four. Exhaling left, two, three, four. And once you're done, just give your third eye another little massage in one direction and then the other direction. And then just bring both hands to your knees, either in the grounded palms over knees or if you're not open and receptive, palms facing up. And both hands are reaching down the yoga. I'm just going to offer three arms. Once again, feel free to join in or you can just absorb the sound. If you are going to join in, take a big deep inhale into the belly. And if they're not already, just go ahead and open up the outer eyes, and then we shall do some warm ups. So, if you want to, if you are on your block or on a block or on a cushion, just come off it for the moment, and then get the flesh out from underneath your bums. Wiggle onto those sit bones, um, ensuring that your navel is pulled back towards your spine and so that you have a nice, long, straight spine so we're not slouching forward or arching forward. have got a nice, straight spine. So as though you have a piece of string coming out the top of your head, reaching all the way up to the sky. And then your sit bones are like roots grounding into Mother Earth. Okay, so we're going to start off with a side stretch. So if you bring your right hand out the side of your hip, lift the left hand up and over, come into a side stretch. Inhale, bring both the arms up overhead. And then exhale, we'll go over to the left. Right arm coming up and over. Inhale through center. Exhale. Off to the right. 
inhale and send that exhale off to the left. Inhale both the arms up overhead now. We're going to do a twist. So we bring your left hand to your right knee and then your right hand out behind you. Inhaling to create that length and then exhaling to deepen into the twist. Once again, making sure that our hips and our, sh our shoulders are above our hips. Inhale, come through to centre again. Exhale, the right hand's going to be on the left knee. <laughs> left hand comes out behind. Inhale, always creating length and then exhaling into the twist. One more time each side, so inhale, come to centre, exhale, to the right, then inhale, come to centre, exhale, to the left. And then, once again, inhale, raise both the arms up overhead, and then what I want you to do is exhale, them behind your back, so a side twist here, so that you can see what we're going to do is we are going to clasp our hands behind, roll those shoulders back, keeping that belly button pulled into the spine, and then inhale, you can look up, so press those fists and palms together, palms together, fists down towards the earth. And if you want, you can look up towards the sky and then exhale, release, and we're going to sort of do eagle arms. So first off, we're going to take the left arm on top of the right arm, cross them over, and then what we can do is we can either have back-to-back uh, -back on the palms or, if it's accessible for you, palms together or fingers and palms together. Next step is to keep the shoulders down away from the ears. So we don't want any of this. Keep the shoulders down away from the ears. And whilst keeping the shoulders down away from the ears, next thing we're going to do is we're going to lift those elbows up as high as they will go whilst keeping the shoulders down. Once we have done that, then we want to push the hands as far forward as we can. You should be feeling this across the back of the shoulders or in between the shoulder blades. And then if you want to go for an extra little stretch, what we can do is you can jut your chin forward and then just gently drop it down towards the chest. And breathing in and out. And then exhale, unwinding, and we'll do the other side. So this time we're going to have right arm on top of left. Once again, either the backs of the palm, the backs of the hands together, or fingers and palms together. Shoulders down, elbows up, hands out. And then we can do the extra chin jump forward and drop. I like to, in all of these kind of like gentler poses, where the, where balance isn't so much of a uh, focal point, is to just close down the outer eyes, because it really helps to get into the body and feel what messages is it telling you today. I right, exhale and give those arms a little bit of a shake off. Now I'm going to do a little uh, um, neck stretch. So we want to. Walk the hands out from the hips, or in line with the hips. Tent the fingers and stretch them out as far as you can. And then we're going to drop the right ear towards the right shoulder. Inhale through to center, exhale, drop the left ear to the left shoulder. Inhale through to center, and then we can take some um, half rolls, or if we want you to do full rolls, I'm going to do half rolls. So I'm going to exhale my right ear to my right shoulder, and then just slowly come through and 
over to the left and then back again through centre, keeping those fingers outstretched and as far away as possible as this will deepen the stretch. It might not look like we're doing them well, but in yoga it's not really important what it looks like. It's more important than what it feels like. Okay, walk those fingers back in. We'll just do one last inhale, reach up towards the sky. Not saying keeping those shoulders down, away from the ears, and then we're going to cactus the arms. So bringing your elbows in towards your ribs and slightly behind and you're looking up towards the sky or the ceiling just gentle chest opener here sliding those shoulder blades down behind the back and breathing we'll inhale bring the palm up and then exhale down through to prayer pose, Anjali Mudra, heart speaks. Okay, we're going to just uh, help aid our hips warming up with a little cradle of the baby. So if you take your, take your left foot slightly out in front of you and pick your left foot up with your right hand. And if you need some support as well for the lower leg or the knee. So you can either bring your left hand to behind the knee or you can scoop your left arm underneath your left leg and then just gently lock with support this hip just open them up break them up for whatever time of day you're doing this and these twisting poses that we're going to be going through really good for anyone particularly that has to sit down a lot uh, for their work you know a lot of people are now working from home sitting at their office desks and such so it's just a really good way to uh, to get the blood flowing right i'm going to switch legs now so picking up your uh, right foot with your left hand and then left hand so right hand coming either behind the right knee or you can flip it through for an extra bit of support. And then just rocking from side to side, opening them up, seeing how this side feels compared to the other side, or the other side of the body that's predominant which is why yoga is so fantastic at balancing everything out. Okay, we're coming back into our easy pose. What we're actually going to do now is come over onto our hands and knees. I'm just going to flip for location. And first of all, we're going to do a toes pose. So this one essentially is kneeling with our toes tucked under. So what you might need to do is get those pinky toes pulled out and tucked under. Sit those hips back onto the heels. And then once again, bring the, or bring the hands to heart center and Jali Mudra. This is one of those poses where it starts off absolutely fine and then gets intense really, really quickly. So this is another one where the breath and bringing the focus inwards will help. So I'm going to take big, deep breaths in and out through the nose. Breathing in the belly first and 
then up into the chest. The more controlled and focused your breath is, the less um, un well, the less painful or uncomfortable. It shouldn't. It should never be painful. It is going to be uncomfortable. If you're experiencing pain, you've gone too far, and you just need to back off a little bit. Um, but there's definitely a lot of uncomfortable feelings to be coming from these poses, and it's finding that balance between strength and surrender. Once again, closing down the outer eyes will help. So if I've, and once you've had enough, you can close them now. And then just come forward into a tabletop position. Lift up those toes and then give them a little bit of a shake out. Tap them on the top of your mat or the earth, wherever you're doing this, taking this class. Just as the blood flow comes back in. Okay, now I'm going to bring our to a big toes to touch, widen our knees to the width of our mat, sit back onto those heels, and then walk the hands forward. Bringing the third eye to the earth. Uh, rooting those sit bones towards the heels, and then stretching those hands forward as far as they can go, whilst once again keeping the shoulders away from the ears. And then next, we're going to walk our hands over to the left, bringing the head down in between the hands for a nice side stretch side stretch along the right side of the body. Uh, the right hip might have a tendency to lift off as well, so just make sure you're grounding that one towards the earth and then keeping those shoulders squared towards your mat. Inhale and walk your hands through the centre and then off over to the right hand side. Grounding this left, is it grounding this left hip? and then grounding this left shoulder back towards the mat as well. So there's a tendency to roll on up. And you'll feel the stretch more when you ground. Okay, back on through to centre. <laughs> and then what I want you to do is to tent your fingers. Just slide, imagine those shoulder blades gliding back down towards your lower back. Forehead to the earth again, and then just like a light bit of movement. So maybe bring the hands back a tiny bit, so you've got a little bit of space. Just getting into a little bit of intuitive movement. If you want to do some circles with the shoulders, circles and coming from your heart centre. Just a bit of intuitive movement today. And then take your hands flat, nice and wide as well. Come up onto your knees and then come into a tabletop. So your hands are going to be directly underneath your shoulders, your knees are going to be directly underneath your hips and then the feet are going to shoot out behind the knees here. Okay, once again, hands nice and wide, so that just offers stability in the poses. Any poses when you are using your hands, the wider your hand is, the more stable you will feel. Okay, now we're going to do some cat-cow. So, inhale, lift the head, lift the bum, exhale, round the spine, and push up, so the space between the shoulder blades, push that up towards the ceiling. Flowing with your breath. So inhaling, and exhaling, 
and see if you can be moving for the entirety of your breath. So rather than kind of like inhale and then you kind of stretching for a couple of seconds, just try and make it continuous, continuous movement, feeling into your body. Where's feeling tight? Where's feeling tension? And send the exhalation there. Almost like you're telling that part of your body that it's okay. It's okay to release and relax and let go. Okay, so we're going to come into uh, thread the needle now. So if you bring your right hand kind of directly underneath your face, and then we're going to inhale that left arm up towards the sky, exhale, bring it, the left arm behind the right, but we're not going to come down fully just yet. Inhale, the left arm up towards the sky, exhale, bring it behind the right with a little twist. Inhale, come up, a twist, and then exhale, we're going to fully thread our needle, coming down onto our right shoulder and our right ear. So hips, hips and feet staying where they were. So all of this twisting has come from the back. You have your right hand pressing into the earth to kind of aid this twist. Make sure the belly button once again is contracted towards the spine. So we're kind of twisting the upper back here. So then inhale that left arm up and then back into the tabletop and then we'll do the other side. Okay, so inhaling the right arm up towards the sky, exhaling, coming down behind the left hand. Inhale up towards the sky, exhale, behind the left arm, inhale, and exhale, coming down fully onto the outside of our right shoulder and our right ear, and then using the left hand if you wish to, deepen the twist. Once again, upper back, stretch here. And take a couple more breaths, when you're ready, and twist, reach up towards the sky, and then back into our tabletop position. Okay, next up we're going to do just a little calf stretch, so coming back onto that, the left toes, and just pulsing backwards, and then from the right toes, pulsing backwards, and then we're just going to do an inner thigh one, so if I flip this way so I can face you, what we're going to do is you're going to take your left foot out to the side, tuck the right back toes also, and then come off the hands, raise them up towards the sky, and then exhale, left hand down left thigh, and then right arm reaching over, so this does the inner thigh, and also, so the inner left thigh and a little bit of the right side side stretch. Come up, the centre again, exhale those hands towards the mat, bring in the left knee and now we'll do the other side. So taking the right leg out to the side, tucking those left toes underneath, and then inhaling, coming up, off our hands, raising the hands towards the sky and exhale that right leg down, right hand down the right leg. And then left arm comes up and over, so we get a nice inner thigh stretch and a little side stretch here. We try and make sure that our chest is nice and open so that we're not kind of collapsing forward. So even if you're just here, like that, that's perfect. 
and then exhale, bring those hands down towards the mat again, back into our tabletop position. And then we're gonna do a modified side plank. So we're gonna start on the left hand side. So you're gonna take your right leg or the right calf out to a 45 degree angle. Then we're gonna straighten our left leg, pressing into that blade edge of the left leg. And then what we're gonna do is inhale that arm up and over. So that means a nice side stretch along the left hand side here. Adding in some arm circles. So inhaling up and over, exhaling down and around. And then switching up the rotation of the arm. So inhaling, exhaling down and around. Inhaling up and over, exhaling down and around. And then place your hand back onto the mat and then come back into our tabletop position and we'll do the other side. Okay, so left leg is going to come out to the 45 degree angle to give you stability. The right leg is going to come directly out behind you uh, with the blade edge of the foot pressed into the mat for that stability. And then reaching that arm up and over for an initial stretch. Push these hips up towards the sky and then add in our arm circle. So inhaling up and over, exhaling down and around, inhaling up and over, exhaling down and around, and then changing the direction of our arm circles. Let's do three on this side. Back into our tabletop position and then we're going to come into our melting heart pose. So from our tabletop position what we want to do is we want to walk our hands out to the kind of so they're slightly wider than shoulder distance apart and then your hips, knees and feet are going to stay exactly where they are and then what we're going to do is walk our hands forward and start to lower our chests towards the ground or towards the earth. So you might be here, that's absolutely perfect. You get an extra little um, arm tricep uh, strength builder here, or you can keep going, keep going to see how far your heart can get towards the earth. If you haven't done this pose a lot, at the start it can kind of feel like you might break so once again, this is all about listening to your body. What does it need today? What does it need in this moment? It will always be different. And that's okay. And then just let Mother Earth take whatever it is release, release it into Mother Earth. Once again, keep the shoulders away from the ears in this pose. And then when you want to come up, just kind of like pad in each hand. So we're kind of pushing weight into the right hand and into the left hand, into the right hand, into the left hand into the right hand, just so we come up nice and gently. Okay. Now we're here, we're going to come into a ragdoll pose. So, to get there, we're kind of going to come into a little half downward dog. So if you tuck your toes under and then lift your hips slightly and then just start walking your hands, Wall, uh, sorry, start walking your feet towards your hands. Okay, and then rest that torso on really, really bent legs. Grab your elbow with each hand, with each opposite hand, and then just sway from side to side. 
more that you just let your head hang as well. Gets into that upper back, just allowing gravity to do some work here. And then release the hands to the earth, and then we're going to come into a uh, a little um, twist, or a few variations of the twist. So first off, we're going to, if you bend, bend into your right leg, and then keep your right hand on your mat, and then we're going to draw the left arm up to the right, and then towards the sky. Exhale, and we'll do the other side. So really big, deep bend in the left leg. Uh, keep the left hand on the mat, pretty much directly in front of your left foot. And then the right leg is going to be straighter, and then you're going to draw the right arm up towards the sky. And then exhale, release. Now we're going to come into a halfway left, so inhale. The legs are going to be more in the direction of straight here. And then if you want as well, you can grab a block. Okay, because what we want in this position is our back to be nice and straight. So inhale, and then exhale, release. Keeping those legs a little bit more towards the direction of straight. It's okay if they're not totally straight. Inhale to our halfway lift. And then once again... We're going to do a twist, but we're going to keep our legs now in a straight position, okay? So we're just twisting from the base of our spine rather than using our legs also. So, right hand either on your mat or on your block, on your book, a chair, whatever you have available. And then we're going to inhale Reach that left arm up towards the sky. Exhale. Bring it down and to do the other side. Inhale, create that length. And then exhale, do the twist. Keeping those hips nice and level as much as you can. So the twist is just coming from the base of your spine. Exhale, releasing the hands to the earth. And then we're going to roll up into a standing position. So if you roll up, it's like we're stacking one vertebrae on top of each other at the same time, and the head coming up last. Okay, then we're going to do a little side stretch. So, so if you ground your right foot to the earth, you spread out your toes as wide as possible, same as we did with our hands. This gives you a bit of extra stability. Take that left foot behind, raise the arms up overhead, and then we're going to encircle the left wrist yep, with the right hand. So just take a stretch over to the right hand side, keeping our the hips and shoulders in line with each other so we're not kind of collapsing forward. Inhaling through to centre, and then exhale to the other side. Inhaling, the arms up high, and then exhale, we're going to cactus those arms like we did when we were sitting. Okay, so shoulders down, shoulder blades going back down towards the bum. Elbows in towards ribs, and then we can look up towards the ceiling as well. Then we're going to add in a little twist here. So if you want to inhale those arms overhead, and then we're going to twist right arm forward, left arm back. So we're keeping their hips where they are, so the twist or as, as close as we can. 
And so the twist is just coming in the upper body. Inhale those arms up high towards the sky and then to the other side. Left arm forward, right arm back. Inhale. Up towards the sky again. If you're not at the top of your mat, just walk towards the top of your mat. And then we're going to fold and you can do hands through heart centre. Or out to the side, whichever one is best for you. Inhale to our halfway lift. And then we're going to step back into our plank pose. Adjust my mat here. Okay, so folding, hands to mat, and then stepping back into our plank pose. From here, we're going to lower down towards our mat. So you can either do that with knees, chest, and chin. So knees, chest, and chin lowering towards your mat with the elbows tucked in, or you can do a full chaturanga in which our shoulders are slightly in front of our wrists. And then we're going to, once again, bring those elbows close to our ribs and slowly, slowly lower down towards our mat until we are lying down on our bellies. And then keep those hands where they are, directly underneath the shoulders, third eye to the earth. Okay. We're going to do three cobras. So inhale, lift the chest up off your mat, and try and use just the strength of your back here. So if our legs are nice and kind of like tight together, there's some tech well, there's some strength in there. They're activated, they're not passive, they're active. Once again, shoulders slide, shoulder blades sliding down towards the hips. And then exhale, third eye to the earth. Inhale, come up again. Exhale, third eye to the earth. Inhale, come up again. And this time, just lift those hands off the mat and see if you stay where you are. And then exhale, lower. Next thing is to just take your hands out. to shoulder distance-ish. Get my notes out here. Turn those fingers so we're kind of coming up into our higher cobra here. And then what we're going to do is dip the right shoulder in and then look towards the left. Inhale through to centre and then exhale, dip the left shoulder in, looking towards the right. Inhale through to centre, exhale, looking to the left, looking at the right shoulder, inhale through to centre, and then exhale. Right. And then what we want to do is just do some intuitive rolling. So you can bring the hand slightly closer. Think of like an infinity symbol. And then roll your shoulders. Just whatever feels good here. Just to wake up those shoulders. And to wake up the upper back. So one thing about one, well, one interesting thing about the shoulders is that it has the most mobility of any joint um, in the human body, but it's also the most unstable. Um, that's the only thing that connects it to the <coughs> to kind of like the main frame of the body is the connection to the to the sternum by the clavicle. So it's got a lot of range of movement, but relatively unstable. Stability comes from all the muscles and ligaments, which is why it's one of the easiest areas to injure. Okay, 
take your third eye to the earth and then just roll your hips from side to side. Releasing any tension that might have built up. Might have built up in there. If you find that you have, um, you get a lot of lower back problems, particularly when you're doing like these sorts of poses, you need to remember to engage that core. Uh, so engaging the Mula Bandha and the Indiana Bandha is going to help with the stability and taking pressure off that lower back because we want to do the create the strength and the flexibility. Okay. Next we're going to do a little shoulder roll and open. So um, if you take your right hand out to the side, you can either have it, so if you have it straight out, the stretch is less intense. So start off like this, and then if you want it more intense, what you can do is you can bend the elbow to a 90 degree angle. I'm going to do that because I know that I need a little bit of a strong stretch. So once your arm is out to the side, your right arm is out to the side, you're going to come up onto the, tuck the toes of the left foot, lift the left leg up and flip it over the right leg. Sole of the left foot on the floor and then you can use your left hand as well as just a bit of extra support and extra twisting. And then breathe. So, so this is a really good shoulder opener. Once again, keeping those shoulders away from the ears. And then exhale, come through, back onto your belly. This time I'm going to do the left hand. So either left hand out straight or at your 90 degree angle. Right toes, tuck under, lift the right leg up and then roll over onto your left hand side. You can come over onto the left ear as well, and then right hand, just for a bit of stability. Okay. And then exhale, roll back towards your lying on the belly, toes, Third eye to the earth, give your hips another little shake, and then we're going to go back into our child's pose. So, coming up through tabletop, big toes to touch, knees out wide, and then walking those hands forward, shoulders away from the ears as always, and then resting the third eye to the earth. Okay, I'm just going to straighten back up here. And get ready for our next little section. Okay, so from child's pose, come back into a tabletop position. So just straightening up those knees and legs. And then we're going to come into our first down dog. So tuck those toes and lift those hips towards the sky. So what's really important in downward dog is for your back to be nice and straight and long, okay? So it's more important for the back to be straight than it is for the legs to be straight. As, as you can see, my legs are neither straight and my heels are not touching the floor. If I try and do that, what it does is it compromises the spine and I get a little curve here. Right, so it's way more important for you to have a nice straight back. So pressing those hands down towards the earth and then the sit bones up towards the sky, having your legs as bent as possible. What we can do here, you can start to pedal the legs. And then drop the heels over to the right hand side. So the entire sole of the left foot is going to be on the mat and then the blade edge of the right foot is going to be on the mat. Try and keep your shoulders nice and square to the mat and this should be a nice side stretch through the left side of the body here. Inhale, come to our downward dog and then exhale, 
drop the heels over to the left hand side. Getting a stretch to the right hand side of the body here. Inhaling to our downward dog again. Inhale, look forward, and we're going to step the left foot forward, step the right foot forward, coming into our halfway lift, and then we're going to exhale. Hold again. Inhale, come all the way up to standing, bringing the arms with us, up overhead. And then we're going to exhale to heart centre. And then I'm going to come back down to some core work. But we're going to do a little twist on the way. So inhale, those arms up towards the sky. Exhale, cactus the arms. Inhale, arms up towards the sky again. Exhale, we're going to do right arm forward, left arm back. Inhale up through to centre and exhale left arm forward, right arm back. Inhale, hands towards the sky. And then exhale, fold towards Mother Earth. Inhale, come to our halfway lift. Once again, you can use a block for this. We'll just go down to your mat and then exhale, hands to mat. Inhale, step back to a plank, and then exhale, come down either through chaturanga or knees, chest, chin, into our upward dog. So then flip the feet over, and then inhale into upward dog, and then exhale, send those hips up and back towards the sky, and back into our downward dog. Okay, so. Next up, we are going to lift our right leg up and back behind us into our three-legged dog. Then what we're going to do is we're going to open our three-legged dog. So we're going to stack the hips. So the right hip is on top of the left hip. And then we're going to bend our knee. So the knee is pointing towards the sky and the foot is pointing towards the earth. Once we're in this pose, it's a nice hip opener. And once again, another little side stretch. Just want to check that we haven't kind of fallen over to the to the left hand side too much. Also, we want to make sure that our right shoulder hasn't rolled open. So square that shoulder back towards the mat, and then inhale, straighten that leg, and then we're going to exhale the knee to the nose. So coming forward right, over our wrists. Inhale up and back to three legged dog. Exhale round. Knee to nose. Inhale back three legged dog and exhale knee to nose. Once again, we're going to inhale three legged dog and we're going to exhale our right knee to our right elbow. Then we're going to drop it down, drop the right knee down to the left and to the right wrist, bring it back up to the elbow, drop it down to the wrist back up to the elbow, drop it down, and then back up. Then we're going to go back up into our three-legged dog, Woo. and then exhale, come through, knee to nose, and then step that right foot in between the hands. Uh, what we're going to do is keep our left hand on the mat, and then reach that right hand up towards the sky, exhale, release the hand back down so it's either side of the foot, then we're going to lower the back knee to the floor and untuck the back toes, we're going to inhale, bring our arms up, so we're in a little crescent lunge pose, and then here what we want to do is even though our inner thighs are not touching, we want to imagine like we're drawing them together. Okay, and then what we can do is we can bring our hands down to heart centre so they are interlaced on top of the knee. 
And then once we do another inhale, squeeze everything together, the inner thighs, and then we can release into the twist a little more because we could hang out here, but it's not really doing anything. So this is where the strength and the flexibility comes in. So pull it all in. And then once it's all pulled in, then you can release a little bit into it with our exhales. Inhale, bring those arms up overhead. And then exhale, bring the hands both so they're inside the right foot. Then we're going to heel toe the right foot. So it's on the edge of the mat. Take it out to a 45 degree angle. And then what we can do here too is take the right hand onto the inside of the right knee and then just gently press that open. And then flip that sole of the foot, sole of the right foot back onto the mat, bring the hand down. And then if we tuck the back toes, first off we're just going to straighten the right leg. So taking the hand, taking your right hand back to the outside of the right foot, and then slowly straightening that right leg, our hips will be well, our hips will be over that, or in line with that. Can you know, the left knee now? So just stretching out the hamstring. And whilst it's doing as well, you can give your leg a little bit of a rub. Come forward into your lunge. And then we're going to go back up into our downward dog. So, Tuck those toes, lift up that back knee, the back left knee, and then see if you can take this front foot back into three-legged dog without dragging it, okay? So lifting up the right foot and then taking it back up into our three-legged dog. If you feel like opening up here, do so. If you just want to go back down into downward dog, do that. And if at any point this pose gets a little bit too intense, you can always come back down into your child pose and take a few breaths. If you've ever lost the breath at any point, then come back down into child pose, regain that breath. Okay, we're going to do the other side now. So lifting that left leg up and back to our three-legged dog, then we're going to open our dog. So Stacking those hips, bending the knee, knee towards the sky, foot towards the earth, making sure that we haven't glided too far over to the right and that our left shoulder hasn't rolled open too much. Square that back towards our mat. Inhale, straighten the leg and then we're going to exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, straighten up. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, straighten up. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, straighten up. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, straighten up, and we're going to come into our exhale, knee to elbow. And we're going to drop it down towards our wrist, pick it back up towards the elbow, drop it down towards the wrist. Pick it up towards the elbow. Drop it down towards the wrist. Pick it up towards the elbow. And then back into our three-legged dog. And then we're going to come straight into our exhale, knee through to nose, and then stepping it in between our hands. Then we're going to keep our right hand on the mat, lift our left arm up towards the sky. Once again, find a nice little twist here. Exhale, release, and then release the back right knee to the mat and untuck those toes. Imagine like we're drawing our inner thighs together, nice and stable. 
and then inhale, come up to our crescent lunge pose, and you can exhale, interlacing the hands, if you wish to, or you can keep your hands up towards the sky, whichever one you'd like to, and then once again, drawing everything towards each other, so inner thighs towards each other, belly button back to spine, and then, and then you can kind of soften into it a little bit more. Okay, release and bring those hands inside of the left foot, heel toe the left foot out to the edge of your mat and then come to the blade edge of the left foot. So we're going to take our left hand and bring it to the inside of the left knee and gently, no pushing, no forcing, and just gently tap it to open. Sometimes we've got a tiny bit of movement in here, I like to do a little rock. Again, another one of those poses. Close your eyes. <laughs> and then with the uh, supporting right arm, we want to make sure that this arm is still really active and strong, so we're not like sagging into our shoulder. Nice and strong. Okay, hands back down towards the mat, heel toe that left foot in, so it's now in between the hands, and then we're going to do our little hamstring stretch like we did on the other side. Okay, so straightening that front leg breathing into it and if you want as well to be stable enough to um, be on one hand you can use another hand just to give your leg a little rub and make sure you engage the quadricep here because when you engage the quadricep, it tells the hamstring that they're safe, they are safe to stretch. Okay, and then come forward once again so that you're framing. And then we're going to try and come back into our three legged dog without dragging our front left foot again. So, nice uh, wide base with your hands, hugging those right toes, lifting that back knee nice and strong. Engaging that core, okay, so belly button back towards your spine, Uddiyana Bandha, lifting that leg up, and turning back up into our three-legged dog. Once again, if you opened it, or if you want to open again on this side, do so. If you just want to come back into our downward dog, or child's pose, you can also do that. So we're going to come into a standing position now. Once again, you can look forward and you can step, jump or float to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift and exhale to fold. Again, inhale all the way up to standing. And then hands to your heart centre, stars to feet. Okay, so from our standing position, we're going to come back into a uh, to a squat. So um, I'm going to do it this way because it means that you'll then see me. And I won't be facing the back of you, won't be facing you. But whichever way you need to do this to, to still face and see what's going on, please do it this way. So for me, it means picking up my left leg, shooting it back. Okay, I'm coming into a little squat here. Okay, so uh, my feet are out at 45 degree angles. And I'd say I've got maybe two paces in between my feet here, but Whatever is comfortable for you. You might be 
like this, body, you might look like this. One thing that's important in this pose is that your knees do not go over your toes, okay? So kind of is dependent on height, I guess, this one. Okay, so once you are here in your squat position, sometimes I just like to do a little free movement here. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our hands, put them on top of our knees, thumbs inwards, and then fingers on the outside of the knees, keeping the arms straight. Inhale, creating length. So even though we're not kind of standing up straight, imagine like you're tucking your tailbone under, um, engaging Uddiyana Bandha, which is, imagine like you're peeing and you need to stop mid-pee, that is Uddiyana Bandha. Okay, so you're engaging Uddiyana Bandha, you've got Mula Bandha in as well, which is the belly button towards the spine. Inhale, and then exhale, dip that left, dip the right shoulder in, looking towards the left. Inhale through to centre, and then dip the left shoulder in, looking towards the right. So a few of these. Going with your breath. Inhaling through to centre. Exhaling to twist. Inhaling to lengthen and centre. And exhaling to twist. And then come up, so straighten the legs, and then arms up into like a five-pointed star. And then we're going to come into a goddess squat, which is arms uh, or elbows at 90 degree angles and palms facing towards each other. So this is goddess pose. Inhale, five-pointed star. Exhale, goddess pose. Inhale, five-pointed star. And we're going to exhale, moon god which is kind of like cactus arms. So those uh, elbows coming in towards the ribs, palms facing outwards. Inhale, five-pointed star. Exhale, moon god. Inhale, five-pointed star. And we're gonna exhale, sun god, which is arms out parallel, palms facing up towards the sky. So and then see what the bend knees. So inhale, five point star, exhale, sun god. Inhale, five pointed star, exhale, goddess pose. Inhale, five pointed star, exhale, moon god. Inhale, five pointed star, exhale, sun god. And then bring those hands up heart center, we do just do an extra little inner thigh workout, which lift one heel up off the floor, kick it down, lift another heel up off the floor, kick it down, lift right heel up off the floor, drop it down, left heel up off the floor, drop it down, and then both heels up off the floor. So I'm feeling this on the inside of my thighs, also a little bit on the outer. Once again, breathe here, a little bit of balance there. Breathing, and then if you are balanced, the thing to do is to find a drishti point or focus point, um, and one that is not moving. So I'm looking at a piece of my floor here. If your drishti point is moving, it is more likely that you will also move. Okay, exhale, drop those heels down. <laughs> Woo! Inhale, come up to your five pointed star. Next, we're going to take our heels behind our toes so they're on like the same train tracks. And then we're going to exhale, fold forwards towards our mat. Once again, if you need a block, come down, please do so. And we're going to do some twists from this position as well. So, right hand on the floor, directly underneath your face. Left hand up towards the sky. Exhale, other side. So, left hand 
on the, the earth in front of your face and then right arm up towards the sky, trying to keep the hips as level as possible. Okay, exhale, back, both hands back down to the mat. Inhale, come up, and we're going to just do a chest expansion along with our forward fold. So we're going to clasp those hands again, like we have done before, like this. So palms together, roll those shoulders open and back, and then push the fist down towards the earth. And once you are there, then we fold from the hips and bring their shoulders as far forward as they will go. Once again, without, you know, totally smushing our, the space between our neck and our shoulders. Okay, unclasp and release those hands towards the earth. Then we're going to do a side lunge, skandhasana on both sides. So coming over onto the left foot first. So take the left toes out to a 45 degree angle from where they are now. And then bend down onto that leg. Once again, you might feel stable with your hands on the earth or on a block. So you've got a nice long spine. Once again, it's important to have a long spine in this position or you can bring your hands up to heart center and then we shall go on over to the other side. So um, I'm gonna do this without touching the floor. So I'm going to bring my right foot, the sole of my right foot onto the mat. Just glide on across, left toes point up. So the left toes pointing up and back, engaging that quadriceps so it tells at the hamstrings that they are safe to stretch. One more on each side, so coming over to the left hand side. And then inhale to the centre, exhale over to the right hand side. Okay, we're going to come through into a seated position, but via a little vinyasa. So, whichever leg you are now on, for me it's the right leg, what I'm going to do is put my hands down and basically twist. So I'm framing, right, in a low lunge, my front right leg. Then I'm going to step back from wherever you are, right or left leg, into your high plank. Lower down, and knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. If it's chaturanga, you're just coming halfway down. And then flip over into your upward dog. And then push back into your downward dog. And then the next thing I'm going to do is just step the left foot forward and kind of the right foot behind it. It's a bit almost crisscrossed over already. Into a seated position. First of all, we'll do a forward fold. So straighten those legs out in front of you, maybe give them a little shake. Um, once again, just getting the flesh out from underneath the bum, grounding in those sit bones, flexing the toes back towards you, inhaling those arms up high, creating length. Once we, when we engage our toes as well and pull them back towards it, automatically engages our quadriceps, which tells the hamstrings that they are safe to stretch. And then exhale, just walk forwards as much as you can, folding from the chest and keeping a straight back. Okay, so if, like me, you're pretty high up, that's absolutely fine. And once again, just breathe into it. So every inhale, creating length, and then every exhale, just surrendering a little bit more. Okay, and inhale, walk yourself back up to a straight seated position. 
and then we're going to go for Janu Shudrasana so if I flip to the front here it's going to be easier to show you guys okay so we're going to start out with our keeping our left leg straight bring your right sole of the foot so it's pressing onto the inner left thigh. Try and keep your knee as low to the ground as possible. Once again, if it's kind of coming up quite a lot and it's like hard to focus on uh, this part, then you can always place a block underneath just for a bit of extra support. Okay. Once again here, creating length. Left toes flex back towards you, inhale those arms up high and then exhale, fold over that left leg. Keeping a nice straight back and folding forwards with the chest so that we're not rounded it and hunched over. Inhale, come up and then we're just going to take our left leg so it's almost out at a 45 degree angle. Bring the sole of the right foot with it. And then we're gonna do a little a twist here. So this is an excellent twist for anyone that sits down a lot as it stretches the lower back here. So inhaling those arms up overhead. The left hand is gonna come over onto the right knee. And then your right arm is going to come up and over to the right. Okay, so once you're kind of like in this pose, so it's a, a nice big stretch along the back here. A couple of things that tend to happen once when we're getting into this pose is that the uh, the right knee and the right thumb kind of want to come with us. <laughs> so we've got to make sure that we're actively pushing that, grounding that back into the earth. So actively grounding that knee, that right knee and that right hip back down into the earth. And then also making sure that our shoulders are nice and open so we haven't collapsed over. We've got space and length, deliciousness. And then sometimes I like to do a little around and over there too. And if it's comfortable for your neck, you can look up towards the sky in this one. It really helps keep the shoulder, shoulder and chest open. And so inhale, release, bring those legs out in front of you, give them a little shake, and then we'll do the other side. Okay, so Janu Shasasada first. So right leg extended out in front of you, toes flexed back towards your body. Sole of the left foot is going to come onto the inside of the inner right thigh. Inhaling, creating length and exhaling, folding over that right leg. And breathing. Inhale, creating length, exhale, go deeper into the fold. Another excellent pose once you're kind of settled in it, to close down the outer eye. Work on the inner eye. And that intuitive connection to your body. What messages is it telling you today? Another thing that you can do that's quite nice here as well is you can just give that right leg a nice little rub. Give it some love. And kneel in the end of the class as well, so you can have a few. Thank you, legs, for supporting me. Okay, inhale, come up, and then take that right leg out to a 45 degree angle, bringing the sole of the left leg with it. Inhale, raising the arms up. Exhale to twist, so bringing that right. Um, hand onto the left knee and then exhaling the left arm over to the side. Once again, grounding that right knee, 
ground, grounding that left knee, sorry, grounding that left hip, checking that your leg hasn't rolled back to the side like mine just did, knees and toes still pointing upwards. Walking up towards the sky, ensuring that our shoulders and chest is nice and open and not closed up. And then inhale, come up, straighten up those legs, give them a little bit of a shake. Now we're going to do another little twisted heron pose. I love this pose because it is just such an amazing example of how you literally just need your own body to kind of be the resistance against itself um, in terms of strength and conditioning. Okay, so you're going to take, just bend your right leg almost like it's in a half cross legged position, and then let's give a wiggle on those sit bones again, straighten up through the spine, and we're going to clasp our left foot in our hands. Okay, so you might be. Um, as I am with your knee bent, or you might be able to get it super straight. Just whichever one is working for you. Always working towards the direction of straight. And just listening to what your body needs today. Maybe it doesn't want that. Maybe it doesn't want to go to the extreme. Maybe it wants just gentle, gentle stretching as opposed to always at the uh, the edge. Okay, so for twisted heron, what we're going to do is, so you have your left foot in your left hand. Okay, so take your right hand, okay, flip your grip, and you're going to grab the outside of your left foot with the palm of your right hand. Okay, so, got that? So, we, we now have our left foot in our right hand. So we're going to release the left hand, and then we're going to, almost like we're, you're put, you're doing archery, you're going to, once again, pull it back and reach that left hand behind you. Now what I want you to do now is just look forwards and check that our right hand hasn't pulled our left leg across our midline, okay? So this is where we want to push the outer edge of our foot into our hand and kind of vice versa. So this is just a wonderful example of resistance. Inhaling space and length, exhaling contraction. Okay. And then inhale and wind, bring that foot down towards the earth, and then we'll switch and do the other side. So I'm going to flip around with you there. So left foot is coming underneath. So it's in a half cross-legged position. And then we're going to pick up the right foot. So a nice, long, straight spine. We're going to pick up our right foot in our hands. So once again, the leg can be either bent or straight. Depends on how open your hamstrings are for me at the moment and how well supported they are by the quadriceps. Okay, so coming into our twisted heron, so taking our left hand, flipping our grip and grabbing the outside of the right foot with our left hand. And then once we're there, releasing our right hand and then through the right hand across the chest and back out behind us. Once we're there, just have a little look forward, check that we haven't tracked over our midline, pushing that right, the edge of the right foot into the hand. Inhale, creating length, exhale, surrendering. And release. Okay. And then one of our last poses that we're going to come into is our happy baby pose. So rolling onto your back, 
maybe as well just using your hands to give yourself an extra little kind of spinal massage and a bit of core work so lifting those feet up and over and then we'll come into happy baby so bending the knees you can either have your hands behind your knees here or you can reach them up to the outsides of the feet and once you're in this place as well you can like gently rock from the side to side just again just giving that little massage tuck that chin in towards the chest as well because you have a nice long straight spine as much spine as long as possible And then release and just hug the knees into the chest gently. And then just take the, the knees to a 90 degree angle and then drop them, drop them over to the left hand side with your arm, your right arm coming out to the right, looking towards that right hand. This is very interesting posture. And then inhale. With knees back through to center and then exhale drop the knees to the right hand side the left hand can come on top of the knees and the right hand or the left hand sorry out to the side looking towards that left hand and try and keep this left shoulder um, as close to the ground as you can bring both knees back up to centre, giving another little hug, and then resting into our final pose, corpse pose, Shavasana. So your feet are going to come out to mat distance apart, palms over the sides of the body, palms facing upwards. Any last little movements you need to do before fully surrendering into the most important pose of any yoga class. Is this one. If in this pose your lower back hurts, something to do is to grab a bolster. If you don't have a bolster, you can use two blocks, cushions, pillows, whatever you need to do to grab to get a bit of extra support underneath the knees because this will automatically push the lower back into the mat the more the knees are raised. You can also do this without any props by having your knees about mat distance apart and knocking your knees in towards each other. As you guys just get settled into your final resting pose, I'm just going to play another If you would like to keep uh, continue to listen to this 
song. I will have it uh, just in your own repertoire. It is called Shavasana by Kamali and Manvia. Once again, also found on Spotify. Other streaming services are available. Um, and thank you so much for joining me. Please stay in Shavasana for as long as you wish to. Um, 10 minutes, if not longer, is perfect. Namaste.